All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about factorials. Um, and basically, factorials are just a slightly different notation where there's an exclamation mark in there. And I just want to talk about, hey, what does this exclamation mark mean? And the basic idea, we'll just do a couple examples. Phi factorial is simply a shorthand for starting with the number 5, and then you multiply it by every number that's one smaller than it, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 down to 1 and then you stop. <clears throat> okay, so 5 factorial is simply a shorthand way for writing 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and 5 times 4 is 20, 20 times 3 is 60, 60 times 2 is 120. So 5 factorial is equivalent to the number 120. Likewise, 6 factorial would be, well, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And we already know that 5 factorial, we already figured that out, that's 120. So 6 times 120 will give us 720. So one thing I want to point out about factorials is notice already going from 5 factorial to 6 factorial the numerical value jumps by quite a bit. 7 factorial would be 7 times this number. Um, so factorials get really big really fast. Okay, That's one thing that's kind of uh, an important idea. 0 factorial, well hey 0 factorial should be 0. Um, it's actually defined to be 1. Okay, so this is just one of those uh, weird little math things. We define 0 factorial to be equal to 1. Okay, And there's kind of a reason for it. I mean, there is a reason. Um, but for now, mechanically, don't worry about it. Um, <clears throat> the way, the reason factorials are important is they're used in counting techniques. Okay. Um, you use them in conjunction with the multiplication principle. So usually you see them in probability or if you're counting the number of ways something can happen without replacement. So, um, And that's the reason why I'm talking about factorials is I'm going to do some other videos that involve um, counting techniques where we'll be using factorials. So let's just do a few more problems here just to simplify them down a little bit. So suppose I have 3 factorial plus 4 factorial. There's not really many algebraic sort of ways to simplify these things. You couldn't magically just say, oh, well that's 7 factorial because I see 3 plus 4 in there somewhere. That's absolutely not correct. Okay, so don't do that. What you would basically have to do is, well, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. I'll just leave that off. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Well, 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 3 times 2 is 24. So we'll get 30 as our solution. Okay, so 3 factorial plus 4 factorial simply is 30. Just like you can't sort of add the factorials, you couldn't magically say that 5 factorial and 3 factorial is 15 factorial. You would just have to write things out. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. Well, we just saw in our last example, um, 5 factorial was equal to 120. Well, so we have 120 times 6, which gives us 720. Okay. If we wanted to, if you notice, 3 times 2 is actually 6, uh, or excuse me, this is actually 6, so we could put a 6 out front. This would turn into 6 factorial. Okay, so, but in general, there's no kind of um, rules that will allow you to jump from kind of multiplica multipli multiplying, excuse me, factorials and turn it into kind of an equivalent single factorial. At least if there is, um, your humble narrator is quite unaware of them, so I can't imagine how there could be how they would work. Alright, so let's do 8 factorial over 3 factorial. Well, most calculators too have a button with a little exclamation mark on it. 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 over 3 times 2. 
at least scientific calculators most of the time will have a factorial key. So 8 factorial, if you multiply out the top you get 40320. On the bottom you get 6 and if you divide that number by 6 you simply get 6720. Okay. Alright, so in the next problem Okay, let's do maybe one more here real quick. I've got 100 factorial over 98 factorial. Let's see if my calculator um, goes crazy. No, it'll do uh, it'll do 100 factorial, but it gives me a weird number, 9.33 times 10 raised to the 157 power. Okay, so you're probably not going to want to simplify these down, or you're not going to want to calculate them directly. 100 factorial is a very very big number. Likewise 98 factorial is a very big number. What you're going to want to do is before you evaluate these you'll want to simplify them. And I could have done this definitely in the last example. But let's start writing things out. Notice um, 100 factorial would be 100 times 99. There's no particular reason I'm putting in parentheses or not. Um, times 98, times 97. Okay, I don't want to write every single number all the way down, but eventually, if I listed them all out, I would end up with 3 times 2 times 1. Notice on the bottom, 98 factorial. Well, 98 is simply 98 times 97 times 96, times 95, times 94, eventually I'll get down to 3 times 2 times 1. And all we're going to do here is we're going to use the fact that we can cancel lots of things out. So I've got the 98's on top would cancel. Since it's all multiplication, I can start crossing things out. The 97's would cancel, the 96's, the 95's, 4's, 3's, 2's, there would be an 81 in there somewhere that would cancel. Every number would cancel out. Okay, the only thing that I would be left with then is, you could still think about there as being a 1 on the bottom, but I would just be left with basically the first two numbers on top. Okay, and so it says 100 factorial over 98 factorial is really just 100 times 99, which that would simply give me 9900. Okay, so especially if you have, um, you know, maybe just not a, a, a fancy dancy calculator, I'm actually using the one on my computer and they're usually pretty good here. Um, I think most calculators would definitely give you an error if you tried to plug in 100 factorial or 98 factorial unless you have a really good one. So this is going to be a little trick that you're going to want to definitely do to simplify things down to make, uh, make life easier. So just a little review of factorials. Um, if you're doing this again with counting techniques or probability, I'm in the process of putting some other videos up there. So feel free to dig around and look at those. If you have any questions, just let me know. I'll try to make some sense out of them for you.